up. All right, gas is up. Oh, water landing. Flaps are down. Area is clear. Water rudders are up. And oh, this is a water landing. you're doing these, uh, this filming today, but uh, it's been almost, I don't know, almost a month since I uh, uh, flew the seaplane last. I have to double check, but it's been quite a while, so uh, the sky's weird enough today, the wind was calm enough today, so I figured, oh, it's winter, but there's no ice on the lake. Let's go up to seaplaning. So a couple of months ago, I posted a video about the five reasons why I bought a Lake Buccaneer seaplane. And uh, again, I love this airplane. It is truly, truly a cool airplane. But as indicated in that video, it's not necessarily the right plane for everybody. And I teased the idea of talking about some reasons where you really want to think twice before uh, you go and buy a seaplane for yourself. And so that's what today's video is going to be about. And shockingly enough, the first reason uh, to the first thing you want to think about before committing to buy a, a seaplane, or a, a buck in particular, or a seaplane in general, is the availability of water. The first thing I want to talk about is just having water nearby, being able to use the plane for water purposes. Now it is pretty obvious that uh, if you're going to fly a seaplane, you want to have access to water, and you and, and that you want to have access to water. Uh, it doesn't just mean that you want to be, uh, you know, if you're living in Arizona or New Mexico, you might want to think twice. But every state has their own rules about how waterways can be used, and every state is a little bit different. There's a handful of states that only allow you to land a seaplane on waterways that are designated as seaplane bases. There's other states, uh, like Colorado, that pretty much prohibit seaplane operations within the state. And there's municipalities that have got different rules about what's going on within the confines of the state. So, uh, the first rule is pretty much join the Seaplane Association, Seaplane Pilots Association, and take a look at the water in your area, the lakes that you are planning on flying in and out of, and make sure that they are seaplane friendly. That's the first tip check out the waterways to make sure that they are uh, seaplane friendly uh, before you before you buy. All right, there's a boat coming, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get up out of here before that wake I have to deal with it today. Airspeed's alive, headed to the green, full power.
Associate Tony Som here. Now the second thing you have to think about when it comes to seaplanes is docking. There is not a ton of room from the water to the, from the bottom of the airplane wings. So docking is really, really challenging. You've got to really be careful when it comes to docking. Uh, if you're planning on docking a plane, you've got to pretty much have a custom-built lift for it, or you're kind of stuck at a, at a weird angle to the dock, so it's really, really awkward. If you're trying to uh, pull up to a dock like a traditional float plane, it's going to be kind of challenging, so you don't really want to pay attention to that. All right, let's head over, head over to Concord, and I'll talk about the next one on the list. Buccaneer 2793 Pop is about nine miles to the west with hotel in about full stop. Buccaneer 2793 Pop, enter a right, two mile right base for runway 20 and report turning final. Enter two mile right base 20, report the final. Done, 993 Pop. All right. We're getting ready for a land landing. Landing light on, strobes on. At landing checklist. Yep. Yes. Check with the undercarriage. Mixture. Ready with the prop. Just a little bit closer, it'll be a glide distance. We're not quite there yet. We have water as my glide distance, so I'm gonna hold for that for right now. Concord Tower, see plane 903 pops about a two mile left face, or excuse me, right face 20. See plane 2793 Papa, Concord Tower, runway 20, clear to land. 20, clear to land, 903 Papa, thank you. Alright, gas is on, undercarriage, down. Copy, sorry, 20. Extra support ridge. Drop full forward, deep valves. Clear to land. All right, red, blue, green, full flaps, commit to land. On the glide path. The third thing to think about is the hangar. Now the Mooney checks in with a 35 foot wingspan. So in this particular hangar, there is not a ton of extra room between the wing and the wall. And a 38 feet long, the wingspan will exceed some of the smaller general aviation hangars. So the fourth thing to pay attention to is maintenance. It's kind of obvious, but this thing isn't like a 172 or a Piper Warrior. There's some pretty unique things about it, from the engine being eight feet up in the air to the fact that it's got to be a watertight bottom to keep the you know, the lake out when you're on the, on the water. Um, there's a lot of idiosyncrasies that go into this airplane, and I was actually a little bit surprised when I uh, bought this airplane, how many local shops, really, really good shops around here, were not comfortable servicing this airplane. And now luckily there are uh, shops all around the country that can work on this. Join the 
Lake uh, Amphibian Club, and they've got a list of uh, service centers, service facilities that can help work on these airplanes, and it's a really knowledgeable community. But just be ready for maintenance. Obviously, with all airplanes, maintenance comes up. When you're combining a boat and an airplane, well, you're kind of taking the maintenance cost of a boat, multiplying it by the maintenance cost of an airplane, and there you go. So just be ready for that and make sure that you're in a position where you can uh, support this thing without having to you know, go hundreds and hundreds of miles to uh, find a, uh, uh, someone that can work on the airplane for you. The last thing to pay attention to is training. Um, again, this is a very, very specialized airplane. It's not a plane that if you've flown a Warrior, an Archer, even another, you know, float plane type airplane, that you can just hop into and fly. And so training is super, super critical. Insurance actually requires initial and recurrent training in these airplanes. And so it is really important that you find an instructor that you can work with to get your initial and your recurrent checkout. Again, the Lake Amphibian Club has a list of approved instructors to work with, and it is a very, very small list. So uh, make sure before you commit to buying an airplane like this that you can get access to training, which is unbelievably important. All right. Well, that's my list of five things that you want to consider very carefully before committing to buying a seaplane in general or a Buccaneer in particular. Please uh, let me know in the comments below what, uh, what you thought about this video. As always, please uh, like this video if you did. Subscribe if you haven't. And until next time, thanks for being my wingman.